is at uh, looks like 636. Yes. And this is our first meeting after the town meeting day elections, and our first order of business is to elect a chair. So I'll entertain a motion for chair. I'd make a motion to appoint Jim Murphy as the board chair. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Motion carried unanimously. Right. Thank Great. you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for um, trust me with this again. I've enjoyed it. Um, so let's do let's do public comment, and then we can rest, elect the rest of the officers and we can move into the agenda. Um, so we'll be moving the election of officers up before the consent agenda. And then we're also adding co-curricular appointments to the consent agenda, which um, I'll pass it on. And first off, uh, congratulations to Mara, Aniket, and Jill. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, and Jill. Uh, we will be assigning new mentors and catching you up. But um, the first few meetings, you'll probably feel it's there's an easy time. So. Thank you. Um, but we're all very excited to have you, and thank you for stepping in the circle. Thank you. Likewise. Excited to be here. Um, so public comment, not seeing any. Um, so let's move to election of officers. Uh, so we need a vice chair, a clerk, and well, I don't believe we need one. We've always had a parliamentarian um, to resolve uh, any kind of process disputes. Um, Rita, would you like to remain as vice chair? I would be happy to, sure. Um, do I have a motion to appoint a vice chair? I make a motion to appoint Bridget as our vice chair. I'd second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jerry could not make it right. She's out of town. Yeah. yeah. Is she our? She's she a clerk currently. Clerk. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think she wants to continue serving? We we can delay the appointment. I See, I haven't heard her make any complaints. That that title has been <laughs> overburdened. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's not here. We all know how that goes in meetings. When <laughs> should we appoint Jerry if she kicks and screams? We can. And reappoint. Yeah, because we might forget. Does she, does she need to be present for us to appoint? Uh, no. no. I don't think so, no. Okay. I would ask our parliamentarian, um, but we have that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she would need to be sworn in first, though, before she could, well, act in a meeting. Um, oh, was she elected could, this time, too? She was on the ballot this time. Did you know she got sworn in? Well, no, we actually should. The, I think I sent an email to you. The results in Roxbury aren't final. Um, okay. They had to recount some of the ballots. So everything is still temporary in terms of, so no, there hasn't been an official calling on her race, even though she was an uncontested election. Um, but so no, she's not been sworn in. So can we make, can I make a motion that we delay the appointment of the clerk until next board meeting? I don't know if we need, do we need a motion on that or can we just do it? We can, can just table we just, it. We can table just do it if yeah, we remember yeah. it. The motion would help us remember it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can say we have great yeah. minutes. Yeah. 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 Ironically, it's the clerk that we're. <laughs> I mean, unless unless someone else is really itching to do it, my guess is Jared would not be more offended. I don't know enough about what the clerk would do versus another position, so that's fine. Thank you. I, I don't think so. And. Parliamentarian Ryan, were you? You were the previous parliamentarian. I am currently, yes. Well, to, previously. Do you want to remain in that role? Because I'm sure you've well, memorized Robert's rules. I think I, I would strongly, uh, <laughs> I would try to persuade you to. I don't know if Jill or Annika or either of you like Robert's rules of order nerds. No? Um, okay. A little bit. Not enough to no. step okay. up that on my first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, partly pros, not a gift. So. Yeah, I mean, I've got a partially dog eaten copy of Robert's Girl. <laughs> So I have one with me, so I guess that kind of seals the deal, doesn't it? All right, well then. All right, then. I move that we appoint Ryan as the parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, uh, consent agenda, and just so you 
Jill and Etiquette, I'm sure you probably know how this consent agenda works, but a lot of our business we just do with um, consent agenda, um, basically it's things in the packet, so we don't have discussion um, on it, we have a motion to approve the whole consent agenda. If there's an item that you have questions about or want to remove for discussion, um, when we bring up approval of consent agenda, you can you know, make a motion to remove an item and then put it on the on the actual agenda. Um, so, so with that in mind, and with the addition of the co-curricular, um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. To approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? <coughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, so for board discussion, uh, budget vote results, the budget pass. Uh, yeah. It was either Thank two, you. three, four, three, or two, four, three, four, uh, two, um, six, thirty-eight. In Montpelier. In Montpelier. Do and we know anything about the rest of I spoke with the town clerk this afternoon at about 4 o'clock, and it sounds like there were some issues with some of the ballots, so they were doing a recount mm -hmm. all across the board tonight, so there's nothing presented right now at all for the results in Roxbury. So what I got from you last night was 2454 four in favor, 863 opposed. Okay, that was pretty close. Yeah, I remember it was. Um, yeah. So it passed overwhelmingly um, in Montpelier. It's a good job, and I'm, I think those numbers, even if everyone in Roxbury opposed it, we can still be signed. I know passed. that's not the I voted in favor of it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't ever. <laughs> it was at least sure. one or something. <laughs> that was not the case in Roxbury. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think we had to assume the budget passed. Hopefully, it also passed in Roxbury. And you know, we're one district, so the votes, you probably know this, but the votes are totaled from both towns. So even if even if Roxbury were to, um, if the numbers Roxbury did not add up to a yes vote, it would be total for the whole district. So, um, and Roxbury has what about the eleventh, one eleventh the population of, of Montpelier? Approximately, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Do you know what the population of Roxbury is off the top of your head? The two thousand and ten census was six ninety one. Okay, and that's kind of the standard number that gets used a lot. So the other, um, the other piece I want to bring up, because um, with Libby not being here, we assume we're going to want to push your policy monetary reports to next week. Yeah, we also don't have student leadership to do that. Yeah, so it's going to, it might be a very, very quick meeting. This, this is the latest, it, even without, even had they been here, this is the latest agenda I've ever seen. I know. I was thinking that heading into this. Um, yeah, most meetings are not this quick. You guys are easing us into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Mara, after her first lunch, like, you guys always end at like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I do want to bring up that uh, Steve Hinchin. Um, right uh, I was just going to ask you if we were. Yes, yeah. uh, submitted his resignation to me yesterday, effective immediately. Um, so we have a vacancy on the board. Uh, I want to thank Steve for his years of service. He served for quite a while and um, was a real strong advocate for our kids and our students. Uh, so unfortunately, Steve has, has stepped down, I think largely due to personal and scheduling reasons. Um, so we do need to put out notice. Uh, Anna, probably. You know, maybe post on both the district website and our Facebook website that we're, we're looking at applicants. Um, should we set a schedule for when we want applicants by, or should we maybe wait, I mean, wait until a meeting to have some conversations with some community members and see um, what the answer is? Because I know that we've got some recruitment. Yeah, but I, so the one thing I just wanted to bring up is when are we next in Roxbury? Because if we, is that the first, is that the first meeting in April? Because if it is, then we'd be, we wouldn't want to do it that night because we want to give people yeah. a chance April first. April 1st, yeah. Roxbury. That's right. Yep. And I hate to push it another meeting. 
so that would be it's been there for yeah. five weeks. That would be a long time. And how does do you have a copy? Because I know April's got the winter spring break too. So sometimes we sometimes we <clears throat> oh sometimes we meet the sometimes snack we down like we crunch them right yeah the twentieth to the twenty sixth is spring break. So we're so scheduled we to meet on the first and the fifteenth. And we do not have one the twenty fifth. I and yeah, so why don't we why don't we put April fifteenth as yeah. our decision date? And if you know we need more time to get candidates, we can always push that back. But I think um, I think the eighteenth of this month is it's just way, too soon, is way right? too soon. Yeah. And the, the April first meeting is in Roxbury, and I think it would be good to have it in Montpelier, so especially um, in Montpelier. Yeah, exactly. That would give Montpelier residents the ability to to come if they want, and it would make it also easier for candidates to appear before us. Jim, how long is Steve's term left? Uh, Steve yeah, was elected a year ago, left. so it would be a two-year term. Um, I think we need to talk to John Odom and see whether our appointment would be till the next town meeting day, or there's also an election in November. Okay. Um, this might guesses, and I haven't looked, is that probably it would be November, just because it's the earliest election that um, yeah, we could appear on. Um, and then that election would be for either a year and a half or a year, depending on, on what day it was for. Um, and yeah, the person we appoint doesn't necessarily have to run for that seat, so if they, you know, wanted to see how they liked it and then let the seat be open. Um, you know, they, they could not run and, and it could get filled through the, the election. Okay, so our students aren't here either. Um, they might be at the basketball game. <laughs> the semifinal. Better than being sick. That would be better. <clears throat> So, um, so we have several committees that have uh, kind of varying degrees of work. Uh, we have, um, I don't think we have any, well, we've got the, the only real special committee we have right now is the MSN. <coughs> That in language immersion, right? I mean, negotiations committee isn't a special committee, but once our work is done, we hopefully will have an agreement for two years. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have several committees. Uh, we have our negotiations committee, which primary responsibility there is to uh, negotiate with our three unions. Um, right now, we're in negotiations with all three unions, hopefully for a multi-year contract. We've had a series of one-year contracts, so that committee has actually been a pretty heavy lift. Um, and when negotiations are in full swing, um, it can be a fair amount of work. That said, we've got our current negotiations committee in the middle of negotiations. Um, and if this gets wrapped up, it is likely that the negotiations committee will not have anything to do, hopefully, for a couple of years. A couple and of years. who are the three entities? How is that split up? Is it? Um the so the teacher contracts. at all the schools yeah. and then paras or something and then custodial, I mean, I'm just wondering what the three. Right. It's teachers, there's it's um, instructional assistants have a separate unit from the sure. teachers. And then there's an AFSME unit that covers um, support staff, IT, and custodial employees. Yeah, right. pretty much everyone but the administration. Okay. Except that the, the people who work in, the, in food service opted out of the union yeah. a couple of years ago, so they're not okay. in any of the unions. Yeah. And, and we yeah. split up the negotiating work a little bit this year, uh, except Ryan is taking it all on. Yeah. Uh, well, we added, yeah, Andrew and I had been the two that have been appointed to the negotiations committee in the past, but since we had all three units that we were bargaining with this time, Bridget stepped up to help out with the MESA and the AFSME negotiations. So we and threw I'm somebody else into the mix to help out with the workload. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it would make sense given that we're in the middle to 
I don't think we should. I, to I, keep I, the like teacher, intact. the teacher mm -hmm. side, I, I think we're fine. That was my thought coming in tonight. Yeah. We're, we're in the middle. The faces are familiar. Yeah. It would be a bit silly to reshuffle everything right now unless yeah. somebody had a really strong desire <laughs> sense to. to <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it might be. A, it might be. It's, it's a committee with a lot of work, and it might be a committee with even more work to come in midstream and have to get up to speed. Uh, so I would entertain a motion to appoint those three members. Oh, because we have to reappoint the committee. Yeah, right. reappoint the committee. Yeah, all the can, committees have okay. to be Can I do it even though one of them is me? Yes. You okay, can, so you I'll move right. that uh, Andrew, Bridget, and Ryan be appointed as the negotiations committee. No board. second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you again for doing that. I know that's a a heavy lift, and we really appreciate it. It's one of the, the most important things this this board does. Um, we also have a policy committee. The policy committee uh, was quite active um, when we were changing districts because we had to reenact all our policies. We changed our structure a little. Um, we were a policy governance board, and. Um, there's a few things about policy governance, which I will not go into now, that didn't quite fit our board. So now we're, um, I think we call ourselves governance by policy, which means we're largely policy driven, but we don't, um, we don't do things that a true policy governance board does, like, for instance, approve the budget as a consent agenda item, because mm -hmm. that's something that we're deeply involved in. Um, so the policy committee's been very active. Uh, most of the work on the merger has been done um, and now it largely kind of deals with uh, kind of discrete policy issues that, that come up. You know, for instance, um, you know, diversity's been kind of an evolving policy and the policy committee has, has done a lot of great work kind of figuring that out for us. Um, the current members, the current members who are still on the board are Bridget and Ryan. Uh, I don't, that's, that's a committee that we might be able to, to reshuffle. I don't know if you guys. I don't want to speak for Ryan. I will say that I feel like because Ryan and I got pulled both into the negotiations work that we have been having a hard time keeping up with policy. doing sure. some of the pending policy things. Me, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely me. It has been somewhat mm -hmm. challenging to try to keep on top of. Sure. And we do have a third person, so there should be this should be a three-person committee yeah. as a standing committee, um, which hasn't quite been the case for a while now either. So. The things that we kind of have on our agenda are related that are mm -hmm. fundraising. Um, mm -hmm. The gender policy. Gender and gender identity. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a discussion of having a sanctuary mm -hmm. policy. That really didn't go anywhere for the last year, but then a religion policy did come up in yeah. the past couple meetings. Yep. Um, so there was a discussion of amending, <coughs> possibly amending the equity policy. To include. To include religion. Yep. Those are the, some of the things on the... The burner right now. Yeah. You know, like I said, at this point in time, the policy manual is in a pretty good spot, but obviously mm -hmm. it's a living document and need addressing in the future. I would be happy continuing on with the policy committee um, to see through some of the stuff that we have still been kind of kicking around. I'd be happy to re renounce my seat in the finance committee to kind of lessen my <laughs> Love committee it. involvement. <laughs> I would very much like to be on the policy committee. That'd be great. I was going to say that I think you would be a, a I, I really, really want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's fair. So that would get I, two I am indifferent. I can stay or go. Okay. I think if the new members have an interest, I'm happy to. Well, I'd love to hear what they all are. And, I was going to say that. You know, yeah. then I might be yeah, well, more sure. willing to know yes. when to a, step up That's for. a good point. Sure. Yep, so that's that's the, great. I, I have an idea of what some of them I think are. He has, but you have a list. The list of the standing yeah. committees? Yes. Um, let's see, yeah, let's go through. Well, okay, that would be great. Let's go through and talk that about that. Sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the next one we have is the finance committee. Is the finance committee, which basically gets a deeper dive on when we get the budget, we get we get a fair amount of information. We get a lot more information than we do, um, but we really don't 
do line by line. We don't delve deeply into the numbers because there's a lot of numbers and it's a lot of stuff that you just don't necessarily need to know to make informed decisions. So basically what we've established the Finance Committee for is just to have a discrete group that meets with Grant, our uh, business manager, and he does that deep dive. And then if that committee feels that there are um, pieces from that deep dive that would be good to bring to the board and discuss, um, or just to have that context for general board discussions so they can you know, interject and, and maybe answer questions other board members might have, um, that's basically the, the role of the Finance Committee. And I would say that the Finance Committee compared to, say, the Negotiations Committee or this Main Street Middle School Building Committee that I've been chairing, um, and I imagine also compared to the Policy Committee, is lighter in terms of overall work. There's four quarterly meetings a year, and then you might have a couple of additional meetings throughout the year to address some other issues, like for example, when the audited financial statements are complete, um, we have an opportunity to talk with the business manager about those. If there is some, like there, there was a gift that was made to Roxbury School District and there wasn't much information attached to it and it's like, how do we handle this $10,000 sum of money? Um, you know the Finance Committee gets involved in those types of decisions, uh, but it's not, um, it's important work, but it's not super time intensive compared to some of the other committee assignments. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then, so, and then the other main committee that we have is the Superintendent Evaluation Committee. Um, which is basically what its name implies. Um, but fortunately, uh, thanks to Becky Bowen, she did a really good job of putting together a form that we use each year, basically, uh, you know, kind of starting, starting around now, around the time that, you know, contract renewals happen. Uh, this, the Bioish Committee will work with Libby to kind of set for her goals for the year, and then just have some, you know, general performance criteria that we expect the superintendent to do. Um, you know, put those together, and then as we get towards you know the end of kind of the contract cycle, um, the evaluation committee will uh, put together a, a draft of how we feel the superintendent's doing, um, and then bring that to the board and then we'll we'll do a performance evaluation based on okay. that. Is that annual? It's annual. Okay. And the contract expires in July? Yeah, the contract expires at the end of June. So we've gone through that process. Um, and one of the things we'll I'll bring both of you up to speed on is kind of where we are in terms of um, you know, the renewal process for that, because we'll have a um, have a uh, executive session soon to, to make that decision. Um, but most of the work has been done. I can, I can give you, you know, copies of the evaluation and her contract and you know, talk to you both offline about you know, what, we, what we've done so far. Um, and when, when would you say that's, that's a committee that is more seasonal in terms of work intensity? When would you say it's most demanding? It's, um, Kind of in the spring to you know work with with Libby to set her goals. Although she does a lot of it herself, it's it's. Just, I mean, the goal setting is more of a check just to make sure that that what she she does aligns. Um, and then uh, kind of right after budget season, towards the end of budget season is when the real evaluation occurs. So. Um, it's the kind of, I would say, um, it's the kind of thing that is a really heavy lift for one or two people yes. for a concentrated period of time. Yeah. Like, you, we really need to be able to lean on one or two people to write out, you know, yeah. write out an organi you know, write out an organization and, and yeah. it's, a discussion, and that takes, but it's that part only lasts for a few weeks. Yeah, it it's is a lot then. Like, putting the evaluation together is the heavy lift, and that, that requires some, some thoughtfulness and, um, and are you currently 
I'm currently on the committee, and I would like to stay on the committee. And I mean, I, you know, I meet with Libby weekly. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's good to have obviously other members bring other perspectives. Uh, and then we have as a uh, as a special committee the MSMS Building Committee, um, which is a broader committee uh, that's not just board members but has several community members as well as well as at least one city council member. Well, I guess I guess yeah, that two, three. Three of oh, Dan yeah. and Jay were the oh, two yeah. members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> they are still, I think, planning to serve out as parent members, but we Tina is now no longer on there. Okay. And so we will need another school board member. I will say I think it will be helpful to have another school board member on there. Can we, we still are, have three city council members? Do we have, do we end up having an accidental city council meeting? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, as long as I don't, I don't think it's a quorum, but it could break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they could warn it as a meeting, potentially. As yeah. So we'll, we'll have to discuss that uh, at the upcoming <laughs> meeting. That's very fun. Or, yeah. But so. it, is a, it is a Montpelier Roxbury School District body that yes. has community members serving, right? Like that, it is something that's That's right. Yeah. And we yeah. felt that there needed to be a, a parent voice on the committee and it just so happened that the two parent members then were so inspired by a Main Street Middle School Building Committee's work that they decided to run for city council. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Richardson and Eric, uh, Jay Erickson, yeah. yeah. So, and they've been very helpful on, on that work. I would not want to lose either of them. Um, we are on the back end of that uh, process. I'd say we're probably like six, I wanna say after we have this meeting with the board, uh, the next board meeting that's gonna consume a bunch of time is a uh, presentation to the yep. board about where we are and getting some insights from you and if there are any members of the public there, getting some insights from them as well. Um, after that, I feel like we're, it's gonna be kind of downhill from there. Um, in terms of the workload, but there's still um, important opportunities to provide insights and uh, help with community engagement and uh, help kind of put a bow on the whole process. Yeah. So even though you'd be coming in in the middle, and I feel like a lot of some of the heavy lifting ha will have been done, there's still a lot of opportunity for contributions there. And we meet once a month, but sometimes people have like some committee assignments or like out of committee assignments. Yeah, I mean, so you're still interested in being chair. So yeah, I feel like it makes uh, sense just the, for the, the continuity of it. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Don't we need to replace Michelle on the Language Immersion Committee? Oh, yes. Oh, that's Thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. The Language Immersion Committee is not a board committee. It is a, uh, it's an administrative committee, but right. as a board member. Um, and uh, is there any we should keep in mind Jerry, that Jerry, Jerry is on the principal search committee in Roxbury yeah, right now. Steve is on the SPED committee, but I talked to Libby and she said that's far enough along the process that and Steve's willing to stay on it, but even though he's no longer technically a board member, um, it would probably not be super productive to, yeah. to put any worse in the, in the game at this point. So Ryan, you just mentioned the principal search at Roxbury. Is there a similar board representation for the Main Street Middle School? Is that a typical that's, process? That's okay. Mm -hmm. Although, but it's ultimately just, the superintendent who does the hiring. Right? Yes. Okay. And the way that process works is the um, the committee the committee helps pick the candidates for the first round and participates in that first round of interviews. And for reasons of confidentiality, that process is all quiet because you know, we don't wanna, um, you know, people wanna keep their searches, searches quiet until it reaches a certain point. And then um, you know, the process you've seen with other principal searches, you know, the candidates that come out of that process, and that's basically, um, 
you know, Libby makes the ultimate decision, but I think she's, on all the searches she's had, she's more or less deferred to the consensus of the committee. Okay. Um, and then that process goes to, you know, the public interview process where the candidates come in for, you know, a very long day. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the community and teachers and feedback. Um, Yeah, so, uh, and then the, the Language Immersion Committee is a committee that's headed up by Mike Berry, who's the curriculum director. Uh, that is looking at the integration we passed, not this year, but last year, um, funding for a study on creating a language immersion class that would be basically, it would start at, at kindergarten and it would be one of the, I think we have five, what we do have five classes now. Um, it would be a cohort that basically starts, that does their learning in um, a world language. Um, and that cohort sticks together uh, through, you know, it would go through elementary school. Um, and the idea being that, you know, they, it's a way to get kids who are at an age where um, they learn both more easily and and with a totally different part of their brain language to to make them you know very proficient in another language um, and it's it's got some unique and cool elements it would it's it's not you know Spanish for kindergartners it's kindergarten in Spanish or mm -hmm. French or mm -hmm. whatever language um, so the committee is looking at whether that's feasible feasible and desirable. Um, and if it is, how how it could be implemented and answering questions like, you know, well, what language would it be and um, you know, how do we structure it and how do we make sure it's equitable, you know, all those right. questions. Um, and Michelle has been on that committee and um, I think they're I think they're pretty deeply into the process, but um, obviously we want to continue for her presentation on that. Um, so there need to be a decision to be made by a certain time or not? What's the timeline on that? I would have to check the, the timeline has come and gone. Um, and I think it's, it's been a more involved process than originally anticipated. Um, so they're still in it and I have to admit I'm not sure when the anticipated um, date. I asked Mike about it when he was at one of our meetings a couple months ago. And it seemed like it might be the kind of thing that would stretch through the summer and into the fall. I kind of got, I kind of got the impression that the only real hard deadline they have is they want. I don't think they want to go miss another budget cycle. I think they want to be able to by the next budget season, which would be next fall, say whether this is something we want to do or not, so we can either commit or not commit. He also mentioned it was things like you know this organization that's kind of leading this effort, they don't do it in an isolated chamber. There's a committee that's formed with teachers and community members and a board member. And community members can't just take five days off to you know iron out a, a plan and go and visit a bunch of schools around New England that are implementing these programs. So it's all about figuring out when can you get people's schedules to accord. And yeah. that's also really extended the process. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure for whoever wants to step into that role, you know, Mike would spend some time with you, bringing up to speed. And, um, I think there's, I think there's a fair amount of literature on the program in general because it is something that other school districts have tried, um, including um, at least one and maybe a couple in Chittenden County. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jericho, I think Richmond's yeah. starting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jericho has right. one, and I think there's several others there. that either are either considering or actually put it into. Into practice, and my understanding is that um, it's been it's been a good program. Um, I think that's it. Next one, all the standing committees, a couple special committees. So, um, so we've got negotiations as the same. Uh, should we just get on the committees and do you, do you both feel you have enough information to? Yeah. Huh? Sure. Um, 
Do you want to express interest now, or do you want to wait until we? Do you want to go first? Um, sure. Um, I I don't have a super strong interest, but finance sounds good. Um, yeah. The uh, superintendent evaluation sounds good to me. Yep. Um, and the the building committee sounds good. To me okay. Three, but I don't have any strong preference for over one or the other. I had a very similar response, actually. <laughs> um, I I did think I had something of value, and I do I do think I have something of value to offer to the building committee. It sounds like it's further along, but um, I'm thinking it might be helpful for me with my communications background. If you do think that there is sort of a public engagement piece that's coming up, that I think it oh, might yeah. be helpful to be on that. Um, and I'd be happy to serve on either the finance policy or the superintendent evaluation. Um, Sounds like the policy one is a little bit more sort of ongoing, and there must be some sort of a regular check-in with the manual, or are they reviewed on an annual basis or something like that? And then it sounds like maybe there's some ad hoc things that are assigned to that committee as well when things come up. Is that a reasonable? It's solution? essentially when something might come to light that there is a hole or there needs to be something updated. The, the superintendent has a, a policy review manual that she keeps track of her making sure that she's monitoring everything and doing her job following all the policies and you know laws change um, right. you know the Vermont School Boards Association will make us aware that you know there's been legislation change at the federal level that our federal nutrition policy would be one of the ones the one that she presented tonight um, they change the mandates change so we have to change our policies to make sure that we're in line with federal state guidelines so um, yes they are all kind of living documents in that sense that to make sure that everything is up to par Yeah. Um, so policy committee, Jill's expressed interest, and in Mar, you're interested. Are you, Mar, are you interested in any other committee? Um, I, I, did you say that language immersion really doesn't need anyone at this point? It does. Or it does. I, I'm interested in language immersion to, too. Okay. Perfect. Um, So for policy, I don't know, Bridget, if, if you're if you're done, it could be Jill, Mara, and, and Ryan. I am fine with that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no hesitation. There was very little hesitation there. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> you still might get referenced. That's okay. Uh, you're a pretty solid legal reference in case you haven't uh, noticed. That's good. That's good. Uh, so. Need a motion for that yeah. appointment? Um, I guess I'll make a motion that the policy committee consist of Mara, Jill, and Ryan. A second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so finance, Ryan, you want to step off, correct? I'd be happy with that. Um, Honestly, if, I, if I'm not on there, I'll hold up board meeting. So it's. It makes sense. Yeah, you no, know, you need that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will, That's I, why I we have a finance board. piece? Yes. <laughs> I will, I, I'm aware of this, that I will annoy everybody on the board with questions if I'm not. <laughs> um, you both expressed interest. You can both be on it. I don't think anyone's going to fight you too I'll hard definitely for. defer to Anna Cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to sign up for everything and then not be able to do the job. Um, we should keep in mind that Jerry will want to be on. So. Yeah. 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 If Anika is on finance and I'm on finance, I almost wonder, does it make sense to have Jerry be on finance? Just to so have that, that there's Rock a Roxbury. Voice? We've talked mm -hmm. about this before, over including Roxbury and over stretching Roxbury reps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but she would have, so Jerry would her. be, well the principal search is a short time thing. So she'd be the clerk, she'd be the finance committee, and where else? Oh, superintendent, superintendent evaluation committee. Um, I don't know, I mean, the, the finance committee, it's not as big of a lift in terms yeah. of the overall workload. I'm not going to speak for her, but um, if the rest of the board members felt like it didn't make sense to make sure that there was a Roxbury rep, 
as part of that to be totally informed and part of those in-depth conversations, I don't think she would mind terribly uh, since it's not as big of a, I'm sure she's probably going to be doing more as on the principal search committee right now than she would on the finance committee. Yeah. And we, we could tentatively have her there and we can always adjust when we have a third person if she's feeling really overstretched. Okay, let me have another person rather. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that. So, um, I'll get Andrew and uh, Jerry. Do we need that motion? Yes, we do need that motion. So moved. Anakit, Jerry, and Andrew for the Finance Committee. Do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So, thank you all for serving on the Finance Committee. Um, superintendent evaluation, I would like to stay on that. Um, I'll get you an interest as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think Jerry is interested in continuing as well. Um, and Jill, have you said superintendent or no? I'm, I'm fine. The one I felt like most strongly about was the building one, so I'm okay. good. We have a motion for... Is that enough? Yeah. Three is uh, enough, right? That's three. That's yeah. okay. me, uh, Anika, and Jerry. Sure. All right. I can do it. I, I move that we appoint Jim. Anakit and Jerry to the Superintendent Evaluation Committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Um, and then I think we just need to reappoint Andrew and appoint Jill to the Main Street Middle School Building Committee. Do you have a motion? I move that we appoint Andrew and Jill to the Main Street Building Committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then I, well, this is making a motion to appoint Umar to the World Language Committee, even though I think since the Administrative Committee we don't necessarily need one, but we might as well. Motion to, I move to appoint Mara to the Language Immersion Committee. Second. That's in favor? Aye. Aye. And do the same for Jerry in the principal search. Well, I think since it's ongoing, I don't think we need to, to reappoint. I, I have a question, though. I just yes. realized we should have asked this at the very beginning. Have you two been sworn in yet? Yes. 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 Have. <laughs> yes. All three of us. Three. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 John Odom was off, so we had to do a workaround. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else who can never. Uh, you Nicely can never done. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. so there's a specific oath, which is perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so we have. Um, yeah, because this is why I heard John was out with a little friend like, are we going to have a quorum? Yeah. <laughs> if Jerry can't get notarized either. But Stop. no, we're, we're all good to go. Yeah. Um, I think that's our business for the night. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, it says new board member initiation. Is that yeah, I wonder about that. I was like, um, after the hazing harassment bully <laughs> policy, new member initiation. Well, isn't that funny that that's our connotation? Right? <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, no, I think we just, that was The welcome. Yeah, the welcome. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Are you planning to meet with these two? I am planning to meet with you guys. Well, are there any questions that anyone yeah. Yeah. has now? Uh, is there's, that there's a training of some sort that happens, isn't there, like in the summer? Yeah, yeah. There's, a VB, there's some VBS trainings. I would also recommend both of you go to the VSBA website, and there's kind of a packet for board members and new board members, um, which is kind of, it's in like a PowerPoint format. It just has a lot of the basics down. I would just scroll through that, spend some time. Um, Joan Anakit, I will, um, uh, you know, let's get together sometime soon and I can kind of, you know, answer any questions and to just bring him to speed on some things. Um, if you wouldn't mind if I joined in that, I, I'm sure that you all have questions that it will not have occurred to me to ask it. I'm getting... So I, other I than the vacancy, is this, is this the board? I mean, Jerry's, Jerry's out, out. Jerry and then we have a vacancy, but... Yeah. Is that so everybody else is the accounting The students are sometimes here, which makes okay. it look yeah. bigger. And the superintendent is usually here. Okay. Yeah, and um, we have talked about 
mentors. Um, I think it might be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that's not something we have to vote on. I just have to vote on. Does anybody want to? I'm happy to be a mentor. Mentor. Anyone? Yeah. Um, Sign me up. Thank you. Yeah. Andrew, you want to be one? Sure. I'm happy to be one, too. Um, so mm -hmm. I guess you guys can. You said it's not an initiation, but we're getting bigs. Uh, Call it that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm happy to be in the like, um, <laughs> No, bigs and littles in oh. for sororities and fraternities. Oh, oh. Okay. I was in a fraternity. I think one of one of the good things that's on the VSBA <laughs> website, like either through the the essential toolkit for school board members or their webinars, is they kind of they kind of talk about like what school board members should get involved in and how to deflect and handle right. things that should be deflected to the administration and how to do that constructively and appropriately and keep the, um, you know, some of our policies cover that. I mean, we used to give people the policies in paper when they existed, mm -hmm. only in paper, but now that they're electronic, I think we just tell folks that they're on the website. But there are po there's a couple of policies that talk about the relationship between the school board members and the and the administration and the superintendent and kind of the division of authority and handling communications with the administration and seeking information, that kind of stuff. I was gonna say when Jerry started, we had said, it's obviously, ideally, we all read the policy manual, we all know all the policies, but <laughs> here are the really important ones that for you, how you act as a board member and how we interact with the administration and the superintendent, like these are kind of the big ones that put on the top of the list to read. Yeah, no, exactly. And some of it's intuitive and some of it's mm -hmm. not intuitive, but good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So, um, to, to, do you already have a mentor, Marlon? I don't think we give Marlon a mentor. So. Okay. So, I think we should just pick yeah. him now, right? Yeah. Um, I'm sitting by you. Want to be my mentor? <laughs> yes. Okay. There we go. Right. We just need to. Uh, <laughs> Jill and I are serving on. The Main Street Middle School building committee together, so it would be easiest. And y'all are on super yeah, 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 great. Yeah, great. Woo. Okay. Woo. Thanks, Andy. Right. That was so easy. Plus, we work across the street. Yes, we do. Carpool to Roxbury. I'm like, oh, that's funny. Wait, you're, well, more people can join say, the carpool. Yes, the carpool. <laughs> yeah, the carpool. I love this. It's yes. all about the carpool. Carpool. Is, typically, it's a like me in the high school parking lot at six. Yes. Yes. One or two cars go to Roxbury. That so. would keep me from going to the yummy ice cream place every time, which is something that I need. So, based on the excitement of this carpool, it sounds like we're going to have more meetings no, in Roxbury. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll keep me. So I did just want to take a moment. I, I had every intention of writing each of you individually and explaining my interest on in being on the board and, and sort of introduce myself a little bit better. but. Um, Everyone's been really gracious in reaching out, and I've learned a lot about you already, and I really look forward to working with you. Um, and just really quickly, my background is for many years, the majority of my career, I worked at the Agency of Education as their policy and legislative affairs person. So I did communication with media and with the public, so I worked closely with the School Boards Association and Principals Association, and I worked um, for the State Board of Ed, which is why I'm, I do sort of have some Robert's Rules knowledge. But for the last four years, I've been the Director of Property Tax at the Tax Department. So that part is a little rusty, and meanwhile, I have a pretty good handle on how you know the numbers go from when you pass your school budget to when you get your property tax bill. I kind of understand that sausage factory. Yes. Um, I do have a daughter at the middle school, and I, I, I've been trying to be really clear that I wanted to be on the board despite that, not because of it. I don't come here with any sort of set agenda or ax to grind, quite the opposite. Um, but I do have that perspective that I think would be helpful, and as someone who's grown up in Vermont, and seen, you know, grew up in the Northeast Kingdom and now I'm here in the great big city of Montpelier. <laughs> um, I, I just, I think, I, I'd like to think that I have something to offer, but I definitely will have a lot of questions. And like I said, a lot of these pieces are things that I saw from the other, from the other side, from the state side. And so I will be asking what probably seem like um, odd questions. And I just appreciate everyone's being so open and forgiving as we ask those questions. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, no, thank you for okay. serving. No, Absolutely. We're really excited yeah. to have you on the board and, and okay. Monica as well. And, uh, if you want to introduce you to the public, no need. I wasn't planning on doing it, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I met with uh, um, Bridget and you um, 
forward. So just to give a little bit of background, I'm, this is completely different from what, what Chill's coming from. I have never been in, in um, any of these situations before. I, uh, I own a small IT company, so I come from a business background. Um, and uh, I've, by, um, I, I've done civil engineering as my uh, bachelor's and uh, master's. So, a little bit of different background, uh, but um, I'm, I'm excited to be on this side of the table and, and learn as much as I can and offer whatever I can um, my my services. So, what you know, a few things that interest me were as as we went through the the committee assignments, uh, the finance, and then the, um, the evaluation committee. That's something that I've, I've done in the business yeah. background, where you know, even though you don't know things. It's a different skill to be able to evaluate and, and work on. Um, so that kind of interests me. Um, coming from the civil engineering background, um, that's where the building committee kind of put my interest. But again, as I said, there's no uh, specific preference towards um, one or the other. But you know, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you guys to, to um, you know, accepting us and, and welcoming us into this. So. Excited, and as Jill mentioned, I'll have a whole bunch of questions, which uh, most likely will be very, some very stupid, but I'll ask them. Yeah, no, and it's kind of a good time to come to the board because you know we, the, the uh, kind of our our two main things are superintendent oversight and the budget. So um, you know those kind of heat up heat up in the fall, although you know we do. Yeah, but kind of year round, and obviously we, we do the other things like the policy, et cetera. Um, but uh, it's nice to have a little time before you get into the budget swing and you know, learn a little more about the schools, the administration, and, and how things work. Can I ask a um, like protocol question? So we got email addresses set up today, the official yep. MPSBT. Yep. So is it safe to say that that is our email address that we can use and give out for board work? And, and yes. Yep. And and I was, and it's all subject to public information, so I don't want to start having other side conversations or texts and things like that. I can use that email if yeah, people use, use, oh. that, use that email for board work. Um, you know, if people contact you on personal email, try to direct it to board work because people okay. will, you know, you're in the community, they've got your email addresses, it's probably not, so they'll use the email address they have. Um, so you know, try to direct people to your board email and certainly initiate any board business from right. your board email. Um, yeah, and then obviously, uh, you know, you're still a parent, so, you know, advocate for your kids on your personal email and, you know, advocate as a parent. Um, so keep that separate too. But I think that's the biggest thing, and actually until Really, like two or three years ago, we didn't have separate. We didn't have separate accounts, separate but it accounts. is. It's, it's there were some public records request. requests, both to us and to U32, and it was just very clear that it would be much better if we just yeah. used a public account for that purpose. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I will say as a parent, just a slight warning, which is that um, because you're now in the MPSVT email system, you might, your email will autofill like for a teacher. So. Yeah. You so really have to do, you have to make that effort to oh, keep your kid related stuff on the other email. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then be aware of open meeting laws. Right. Uh, anytime you have three board members on any communication, um, you are in a potential violation of open meeting law. Um, so the only information that can be shared in that type of setting, and that includes like, having drinks at three needs. If you're, you know, if <laughs> three of us coalesce at three needs, we should not be talking about board business. Um, the only the information that you can convey is a kind of purely administrative stuff, like, you know, the meeting will be at seven, or do you want a carpool? Um, do you, you want know, to put things on the agenda? You can set an agenda over yeah, the email. Um, yeah, and you can, you can send agenda items to me uh, to request. Um, and have them put on the agenda. 99% of the time, they end up there. I might want to discuss it with you or have questions, or you know, we might want to park it maybe a little in a different spot in terms of just you know, laying out the agenda you know, weeks in advance. Um, 
What if, what if there's something, I'm, I, I know I've come before the board about a particular piece. If somebody wants the board to address something or has a question of the board or has a statement they want to make to the board about some particular pressing topic, I assume in a lot of cases people probably blast it to the board, but is the protocol that we send things to you, are you the channel through which, or because if I then forward it to the rest of the board, have I now just created a meeting? I'm just, I can imagine people I would, sending. I would, I would send stuff to me. Okay. At least, yeah. Um, okay. And I think we try to filter most board requests through me, um, just to make sure that we're we're not we're not doing that. Um, and if someone emails, uh, and this happened, I mean, I think we got one today yeah. before the meeting. So if someone emails the whole board, you can respond to them, and you might want to respond to them, but you shouldn't respond to everyone. Yeah. Just you can respond directly. Okay. Yeah. And it's also important when you're talking to members of the public or potentially even the press, that people understand that you as an individual board member, you might be expressing your opinions, which sometimes might differ from the, the majority vote of the board on an issue, and that's fine. Um, you know, First Amendment rights, it's great. But it's important to distinguish that for people, that you're speaking as one board member, you're not speaking as the entire board, because the board itself does have authority you know, right. um, that one board member on his or her own does not. So. Okay. Yeah, and there is, you know, some different protocol there. Um, I think the BSBA guidance kind of says once the board speaks, mm -hmm. the board has spoken. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's right. I think I think the VSBA mm -hmm. sort of, and that's not a law or a requirement, yeah. but the protocol would suggest as a protocol for board members to to at least think twice or avoid criticizing the board's action after it's happened. Yeah. But as Andrew said, you have, I mean, yeah, you're, yeah, you're I mean, political. You're right, and, but yeah, you're like an you, official, yeah. you explain things. Yeah. Um, but it's important to say, you know, this is my perspective. So say, for example, you did, you were in a minority vote on an issue and you were talking to a member of the public or a member of the press about it. You, you are, you can certainly express, no, but there, there is nothing here that would, um, limit your First Amendment rights to say, you know, this is this is how I feel about this issue. But general protocol, like Richard's talking about, is to say, but, you know, we are a board, we, we act, at, yeah. you know, as as a single unit, and just because I didn't agree with this, the board has spoken, this is the decision of the board. And, you know, VSBA protocol is generally to support the board at large, even if you disagree on the matter um, after a decision's been made. But, but it's not a statutory requirement. And then it sounds like logistically items come from you, Anna, at the board meeting. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure we're missing a bunch of little <coughs> stuff, but. And I, I, are your mailing addresses and phone numbers, public information, and mm -hmm. available yes. to people to write and call? Okay. Yep. I think Our. we actually. Took, I <laughs> think we took them off the website. Did we? I don't think so. I, I used I it to text Jim. Yeah, I was going to say, I think they are. I thought we took the physical addresses off. Oh, I don't know about the physical. Well, I thought they were so good. Yeah, they're in the boxes. They're back out. Yeah. 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 We definitely took them off at one point. But do you get calls? You mentioned phone number, phone numbers. Do you get, do people get calls? I'd say they get calls. I have. Do you? I have, I'd say. Not that often. Not that often. The vast majority. Um, sure. comes via email. Okay. Email, I mean, and the second thing is people just catching you somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sporting events. Sporting <laughs> events, go off, Shots, yeah. rounds. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I have a, there's, it's in our, it's in one of our policies. I think it's our superintendent board policy, which is if you're communicating with the superintendent or have a request, of the superintendent to copy Jim. Mm. And um, yeah, and s and also do not go to administrators directly. Right. Like the superintendent, like kind of the, the pathway to administrators is through Libyan. Okay. Um, yeah, like don't contact Ryan and say blah, 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 you need to fix this. Um, that puts everyone in a very awkward place. 
I, I will say in practice, though, with the superintendent, I feel like there are some uh, there are, there are some in practice like exceptions to that rule. Like if we're working on a negotiations issue, we'll work through, and then I generally like to share things with Jim just so he's in the know. But um, or like if we're putting together a mainstream middle school building committee agenda thing. I yeah, don't so want to fill up your inbox too much. Yeah, no, I kind of think of it like as a doorway thing. I mean, if there's like a new matter, a new initiative that you're going to bring up with Libby, um, you know, kind of involve me at the onset, but then if it's just logical, like, okay, like, that's great, you know, chill, let me go work on this, and that might involve, you know, a series of communications over a series of months. Like, once, once it doesn't make sense for me to be involved, it's totally fine to, you know, have an open flow with her on that matter, but if, if there's something like completely new and um, you know, raises a new set of issues, then I kind of go back to the doorway. Okay. How are the students appointed? Are they? Um, Does the school appoint them from yeah, they're, student they're leadership or something? Student okay, leadership. so they're not on this March cycle like we just did yeah. yesterday. Okay. So we had a meeting tonight with no public involved, um, but you know, you somewhat frequently get public coming and sharing comments, concerns, praises, whatever. It's tough sitting here and having somebody tell us, that, please do this or do that. But our role during a meeting with the public comment period isn't a chance to interact with the public in the setting. It's really it's a chance for us to listen um, and kind of absorb those and maybe use them to make decisions later on in the meeting. But yeah. during the public comment periods of our meetings, even if we have 100 people here going through the microphone, we don't typically respond to every single comment, every question, every direction that the public would like to see. Um, yeah. And that's not the case that we have, you know, say a principal or grant or someone else coming up, you know, making a presentation on a program or the budget, then obviously, you know, we can all ask questions um, during, during that presentation. Or if it's a member of the public who's giving an actual formal presentation on an issue, um, have interaction that, but for like the public, for the set aside public comment period, um, yeah, it's we're in the same mode, which which can be depending on the topic can be uh, hard to sit here and not react or give you know give the type of assurance or response that. You know, is and is it safe to say that you are also the spokesperson for the board on things like social media and? Uh, like this search for another board member? It seems like that's, are we supposed to help get that word out? Is there a Yes, method? I think you could definitely help get that word out. Um, and uh, Social media is tricky. Uh, you know, we're, I think many of us here are on social media. Some of us are on various groups. Um, you know, I will share from time to time, and Michelle was really good at this, and you know, Steve did a good job too, and you know, Bridget has shared um, as well. Um, you know, just kind of general information, especially when a topic comes up. Um, mm -hmm. I found that helpful. Um, I think there has been some advisement that you just don't want to do that at all, um, especially, and also, um, even if it's just on a information level, if board members start coming in, if three or four of us start talking, you know, and kind of getting one of those chains on bombs, mm -hmm. um, are we in violation of the meeting laws? Wow, yeah. uh, so it's tricky. I, I try to be pretty selective. Um, but there are times when it's it's useful to engage, and sometimes, especially if it's you know if it's a matter that's controversial and it's blowing up and maybe blowing up in not a helpful way, um, you have to maybe contact me and and see. But if if you know it's something like well, the, the, the you know say there's a people are asking some questions, I think a post that's totally safe is you know. Uh, we're talking about it at this next meeting. You know, if you want more information, please attend. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, just yeah, you know, getting information out there, I think, can be. Helpful. <coughs> but if it's again, if it starts to blow up or you start to 
feel like you're opining or getting into a real dialogue, especially if others come in. Um, right. <laughs> that might get a little tricky. Um, anything else? And again, you know, um, I, I don't know. We don't really have a system for lenders. I would just say let's try to just have a few, you know, coffees over the next few months just to make sure that yes. we're checking in with the questions. Um, and I certainly want to meet with both of you just to get you up to speed um, on a couple things. You have, you have a couple decisions to make, and I think that's, that's mostly it. Okay. One thing for Jill, we have the Main Street Middle School Building Committee next Monday. It's the second Monday of every month. It's on their current schedule for. Are those here? They're at their middle school, oh. so, yeah. Okay. Right down the street. And how do you generally find out when committee meetings are happening? Like, I assume once you're in them, you maybe decide when you're meeting next, but... <laughs> They're all announced. They have to be publicly warned. Yeah, um, so Anna would send out to the entire board whenever there's any committee meeting happening. Awesome. So. Yeah. yeah, the committee should appoint a chair. <laughs> they can do that on the next meeting. Yeah, but the, the committees are also subject to them being less so that be be warned, and that's that's tricky because sometimes, there's been a couple of times, that's been forgotten, and you're about to meet, and it's like mm -hmm. you didn't warn it, so you like set set aside a lunch for a meeting, and you can't do it. So mm -hmm. it happens to happen in a while. But then conversely, if it, if it is warned, like allocate could come to the building committee meeting. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can come to the building committee meetings. Yeah. <laughs> we, we encourage. We encourage one attendance. Yeah. Which we have not gotten, but. <laughs> that's okay. That's good There's a dream. Yeah. We'll do better, better engagement. Yeah. Okay. Well, we rarely get out here before 8, but I think um, we can pull that. That will be up. I don't know what to do next. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. Aye. 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 Aye.